The Cassandra Voss Center is a place that thinks about identity and we're particularly interested in gender and how it intersects with race and class and sexuality. It's a really beautiful story. It's a story of a building built out of love for a father for his daughter. His daughter Cassandra Voss was my student. A beautiful, joyful, spirited young woman who was passionate about issues of gender justice and thinking about race and decentering whiteness and how to build inclusive, beautiful community. And when she died in a car accident, her father decided in her spirit and in her honor he would build a building and so he raised $2.8 million to do that. And this is the year of Bell Hooks because it's our first year and so we thought, who else better? We could think of nobody else better. I'm very saddened by the death of my friend, Bell Hooks. Uh, my introduction to Bell uh, came about five months before the Cassandra Voss Center was set to be opened. And I was having a meeting with Carlin Crowley, talking strategically about what our plans would be for the center once it's opened. And we were both very committed to uh, making a splash uh, in, in the first year of the center's existence. And I was always uh, encouraging Carlin to think big related to that. And so when I asked her what something big would be, she mentioned, well, we have to get somebody that is just really famous and important there the first year to give the center credibility. And I said, like who? And she said, well, somebody like Bell Hooks, but she'd never come. And I said, well, wait a minute, Carlin. First of all, who's Bell Hooks? And she went on to describe to me that Bell Hooks, if there was a Mount Rushmore of feminist scholars, that she would be part of that Mount Rushmore. There, I have been saying all year, if there were a feminist Mount Rushmore, Bell Hooks' face would be on it. That would be my next dream. That would be what, our next what project. What is it, Nate? And went into more detail about who Bell was, and after she was done, my question was, well, why wouldn't she come? Let's give it a shot. And so we went on and talked about other things that evening. Well, when I got home, uh, oftentimes I'd I'd pop into Kathy's room and, you know, reflect, uh, etc. And I'll never forget that night I was sitting on the edge of Kathy's bed and just looking around and my eyes gazed towards her bookshelf. And right there is, you know, big as day was a book with the name Bell Hooks on it. And I took that as a sign right away that uh, God was winking at me and was destined that Bell Hooks was going to be there. And in fact, I called Carlin the next morning and said, well, whether you know it or not, Bell Hooks is going to come. And so let's get to work. And ultimately what happened is Carlin wrote a letter to a friend who knew a friend who knew Bell Hooks. And to her surprise, about a month later, she gets a call from Bell Hooks. And the first year and turned into multi-years uh, was the year, year of Bell Hooks. And uh, that did really give credibility to the center. But more importantly than that, uh, I got to know Bell very well. Uh, from the minute that she arrived on the St. Norbert campus, uh, I'll never forget the first time I met her, and we connected immediately, and it's not as if we had similar backgrounds or even similar views, but we had a, a way of uh, communicating that it was challenging and exhilarating and all the rest, and, and we became good friends, and even to the point where we had a call every Friday morning at 7 a.m., uh, I typically call her, like on my way to work, I'd time it in such a way that I'd be in my car at that time. And we had numerous conversations. I made several trips down to Berea. I combined, uh, you know, business trips where I was close to that area and would go down there. Uh, I never, of all the conversations, uh, all the visits, all the dinners we had, uh, it was rare for me that I didn't walk away from that interaction. Having learned something, having my brain stretched a little bit, Hopefully she felt a little bit the same way, but uh, she was really a joy to uh, be around and I'm gonna miss her terribly. That is that this white male hetero man would be called to love in such a deep and profound way. It is not easy to raise lots of money mm -hmm. to do anything in our culture, but that he wanted very much for people to hold in their hearts and in their mm -hmm. minds the memory of his daughter, a radical feminist thinker, a believer in social justice. And I'm just, I stand in awe. I stand in awe of the person that she must have been to evoke in him and to inspire him. It's hard to articulate um, and put into words the passing of Bell Hooks. 
Gloria J. Watkins and what she has meant to me personally, what she meant to and has meant to the Consumer Law Center, what she has meant to the world and to her friends and family and loved ones. She um, was the impossible dream in starting an intersectional identity center from scratch um, in the memory of Cassandra Voss, my student. Cassandra had read Bell, I assigned Bell because my mentor, Barbara Ann Crusoe at Earlham College assigned Bell Hooks. Um, and so there are generations who pass on the reading, um, her reading, because it is life-changing. And when Kurt Voss said, who, who might be the person to launch the beginning programming at the center, I said, oh, it's very clear to me it's Bell Hooks because she speaks across so many genres to so many people outside the academy as well as inside the academy. And it became clear that we needed to build a year in her honor. And I said to him, I don't know if she'll come. And it'll be a little strange if we have a whole year dedicated to her. <laughs> and she doesn't come. Um, but we're going to do it anyway. And I've been in the field of women's and gender studies for a long time. and hold every connection, but wrote a pour your heart out letter, which was also the advice of Stephanie Troutman and Peggy Rivage Sewell, and, and I said, I'll wrap you in blankets and sleeping bags if you will come to us in the cold, frozen tundra, um, and she came, and that started a series of conversations and her residency there, because she was starting the Bell Hooks Institute, and we were both starting centers from scratch and wanting to lift each other up. And I, as a white woman, felt so humbled to be in her presence, to learn from her, to um, experience her humor. She's so funny. And her expansiveness, her mind, she had a wild mind in the Natalie Goldberg sense. She could speak on any topic from fashion to her beloved chili dogs from Dairy Queen, from going thrifting, to thinking about and naming off the top of her head new frames of knowledge and ways of being that had not been invented. I think, especially as an academic and having spent my life in higher ed, people underestimate how brave and boundary-breaking her work has been because she's brilliant and she chose to speak um, to people holistically without jargon. And she was way ahead of her time in doing that. And so when later in my life as a writer, I decided on a pseudonym, I thought, um, I will take the name Bell Hooks. And when I wrote an essay about it that says, when the name Bell Hooks is called, the spirit of my great grandmother rises. And so that was the beginning of me realizing that that bold speech that I had inherited from Bell Hooks, that many people would hear that boldness of speech as anger and not as um, provocative defiance or dissent. You know, I noticed that a lot of what you think is anger is when you don't agree with me. Every book she wrote was ahead of its time. Teaching to Transgress was ahead of its time. Um, her book about masculinity was ahead of its time. Real to Real was ahead of its time. Uh, she was prescient. And uh, I'm going to read a quotation from Real to Real. She said, I want there to be a place in the world where people can engage in one another's differences in a way that is redemptive, full of hope and possibility. Not this, in order to love you, I must make you something else. That's what domination is all about. That in order to be close to you, I must possess you, remake, and recast you. I think fundamentally Bell Hooks, uh, her book was all about love. She was all about love. What we are called to, that if you believe that there is a divine plan for your life, then you have to believe that there is a calling on all our lives. So I thought a lot about Cassandra's father, Kurt, and how her death opened up a space of divine calling on his life that he answered. He didn't have to answer. 
In terms of my own growth as a scholar in person, Bell Hooks' work really helped me more fully understand intersectionality and the need for a truly comprehensive understanding of justice, helping me think ever more carefully about what we owe to one another as humans within systems of power. I appreciated her willingness to meet people where they are and to emphasize love as central to authentic relationships and a life well lived. It was so exciting for my students to read from her book all about love and then be in conversation with her at the Cassandra Boss Center. What a special opportunity for them to engage so personally with such an influential thinker. I admired Bell's intellectual curiosity and her commitment to constant learning and growth, illustrated by the fact that she devoured books. I also admired her desire to connect the intellectual life with the spiritual life and her practice of being in conversation with all types of people about issues that truly matter. Thanks, Bell Hooks. May you rest in peace. So I think of Cassandra's father as here he is answering the call through his grief and taking that grief and transforming it into something wondrous and wonderful that few institutions in our nation have. I mean, women's centers are usually like in the ghetto in the back of beyond or in some little basement area. And here we have this radiant, beautiful center that I think people from all over the nation should come to St. Norbert's just to be part of this story and just to see what one person can do in making a difference. I remember when Carlin and Kirk shared with me the vision and plans of bringing Bell Hooks to the Cassandra Law Center. And Carlin had shared with me that one of the sort of logistical items that they were trying to figure out was Bell needed a ride from Berea, Kentucky to the airport in uh, Northern Kentucky. And at the time, I was a graduate student at the University of Kentucky, which, you know, Lexington, Kentucky is pretty much directly in between Berea and Cincinnati. And so I almost sort of laughed and thought, well, hey, I would love to be Bell Hooks' driver. And little did I know that title of being Bell Hooks' driver would be the single greatest title I could ever have because in those car rides, taking her to the airport on her way to St. Norbert, I got to know Belle. And beyond my role as her driver, we got to know one another through picnics and getting together in Berea and visiting, you know, in the sort of years between and after her visits to St. Norbert. What I thought was an opportunity to meet a icon, a legend, a hero of mine, evolved into an opportunity to have a truly wonderful friend. She was always so interested in my family and wanted to know how they were doing and, and, and had an ability to inquire about how one was doing in a way that you, you knew she she was thinking about things on a sort of deeper plane, on a much sort of spiritual way of being. And I feel so grateful to have been able to have the honor to share space with her, be in dialogue with her, learn from her, and to be her friend. I remember when I was an undergraduate, when I first was introduced to her work, I found it to be so accessible and deep. I think for me the core of it for myself is a more organic sense of who am I writing for? Who, whose lives are my, am I hoping to transform? And because I have always wanted to reach people beyond the academy, I feel like that has really been part of what called catapulted me into um, being considered a public intellectual. And I'll never forget the experience of reading for the first time her book, Black Looks. And it was the first time I remember reading a book where I felt sort of in real time that this book was changing me. I was just one of many people 
to call Bell Hooks a friend, but I feel so grateful and lucky to have been one of them. I'll miss you, Bell. I'll miss hearing your voice. But know that your spirit and your work will live on. But I believe that the essence of living a meaningful life is to have awareness and to be able to engage in critical thinking. And critical thinking isn't a mystery. It's asking yourself who, what, when, where, why, which is one of the reasons that I say children are some of the best critical thinkers because they ask those questions. Uh, this, well, this was really sad news uh, today about uh, Belle's passing, which obviously is a blow to caring, thinking people everywhere. But, you know, I think for those of us who got to know her at St. Norbert College, it, it felt especially personal because over the last decade or so, you know, St. Norbert became a kind of home away from home for Belle. She was, she was a friend and she was a wonder just one of those people that you cannot imagine the world there being a world without a bell hooks in it and I uh, you know, her, her arms might not have been that long but she was always able to somehow embrace every man woman and child that she came upon and one of my special memories is the night that Belle and I got dressed in pajamas and I think maybe I was in a bathrobe and read books for dozens of small children at the Cassandra Voss Center uh, which was a hoot, and uh, as it did so often, Belle's smile just lit up the place. Well, God bless her. Sometimes we're transformed by a quote. Um, I have this ridiculous looking sheep at my house, and it's because I'm deeply moved by the admonition, if you love me, feed my sheep. And that's, for me, a call to service and sustainability and sharing. But a lot of times when I meditate, it's just on a sentence. Meeting Bell Hooks and working on her residency was profoundly life-changing for me. I came across her book, All About Love, during the darkest grieving process of my life. Her book taught me to appreciate the true love I had with my grandmother, a love that was stronger than death. Working with Bell gave me a new lens to view the world through and also the courage to leave my job at a Fortune 50 company and work full time to provide space to talk about white supremacist, capitalistic, patriarchal culture. More importantly, I will continue to lead with love just as Belle guided me to. I'm so grateful for the three years I had with her. She will continue to live on every day in the work that we do. Your heart has to be ready to handle the weight of your calling. That's been my meditation for a month. It is she who spoke to me as I lay with the lamp on, reading page after page deep into the nights and as the sun rose in the mornings. It is she who spoke to me on my quiet walks as I contemplated feminism, white supremacy, patriarchy, imperialism, capitalism, and love. It is she who spoke to me greeting me so warmly and asking about my family. We shared many moments catching up in the chapel of the Cassandra Voss Center through the years. It is she who spoke to me as she shared her vulnerabilities, asked questions so that I could share my vulnerabilities and questions. She shared her truths and validated my truths too. It is she who spoke to me as a friend. Our talks would often end laughing, my hand clutched in hers, and I never wanted to let it go. It is she who now speaks through me as I impart her wisdom in our conversations. It is now her words through my mouth. It is now her spirit that is forever in my heart. Belle, I will miss our coffee talks and car rides, the tea in your living room and dinner time talks. You have changed my life forever and I'll be comforted by the legacy you leave behind. A generation of powerful people who have been inspired by your words and actions and the connections to the people who now follow your lead. I love you. That's part of why people think of me as a public intellectual because I write across a broad sweep of things addressing an audience of everyday people. Bell Hooks is black genius, black excellence. We all know that. But meeting her and experiencing 
experiencing Black Genius, Black Excellence was one of the most powerful memories in my life. A lasting impression she left. Not only displaying Black Genius, Black Excellence, but the humanity, the connection, the realness in which she invited you in. Genius, excellence, love. I am just honored to have experienced that firsthand. One of the greatest minds, spirits, the world has ever, ever experienced. And I'm just so fortunate that I got an opportunity to be a part of that live. Bell Hook, RIP, rest in power. A true genius, true excellence real love. Do you really think that I've written more than 30 books at the, the tender age of 61 by being public? It's a lot of hours <laughs> spent by myself um, in solitude, in preparation, in contemplation. Yeah, I've just been thinking about all the memories that are all just coming back to me um, from those two years that I spent working at the Cassandra Voss Center. and. There's just so many memories that I have of Belle from just driving her around the pier in my car, watching her shamelessly flirt with people. Um, that was always the best. And just thinking back to the time also that she read her children's board books on Facebook Live for the first time and just how great it was to see her be so passionate and excited about that, even though it was something new. When I recently at the New School in New York did a conversation with a television celebrity thinker, Melissa Harris Perry, mm -hmm. and they asked me, oh, are you willing if we want to streamline? Of course, I didn't have any idea what streamlining was. And I was like, okay. And then later when I heard that 300,000 people had listened to or looked at um, the dialogue between us, I was in awe. Um, but my favorite memory though was just sitting in her hotel room eating Priyas for lunch and being there with myself and Carlin and uh, George Yancey and just it was just a gift to be there um, to listen to them talk and have conversations about life in general. Um, we all knew that she was a brilliant scholar, but also that a lot of the things too, she was were mundane, right? And she was human, just like the rest of us. And um, so it was just great to be in that space and to just watch her be and listen to her laugh and talk. And she had the best laugh, and I'll never forget that that moment, that lunch, and just being able to learn from her in, in that moment. Um, and just overall, learn from Belle that. Like, we are all complicated people, but she taught me so much and taught me that we all deserve love. And uh, I think that's the most important thing, and, and never will I forget that um, above all. So, may she rest in peace. Heaven has gained another angel. Our human world has lost a dearest sister, but inherited a legacy of pedagogy of hope for a just world, inspired by mother, sister, hero, theorist, educator, teacher, activist, practitioner, bell hooks. Shiro hooks, thank you for activating a movement to embrace teaching pedagogy to transgress. Thank you for challenging us to intentionally create, cultivate, and nurture spaces for critical dialogue. Thank you, Shiro Hooks. Citing page 36 of Dr. Hooks' teaching community publication, she leaves us with a legacy to build a community that requires vigilant awareness of work, activism, co-conspiring, co that folks was continuously engaged in to undermine all the socialization that leads people to behave in ways that perpetuate domination. And for me, I am reminded of white domination. Mother Shiro Bell Hooks, rest in power. Thank you. This is Kevin Powell. 
poet, journalist, filmmaker, civil and human rights activist, Brooklyn, New York, New York City. I am profoundly saddened by the death of Bell Hooks. She was my mentor, friend, sister, and just one of the greatest writers and thinkers we've ever had. I'm just glad I was able to travel to her house in Berea, Kentucky to pay my last respects days before her passing. I cried sitting there with her as she slept, thinking of our 27 year history of the man I am now because of her. Like others who visited privately in Bell's final days, I held her hands, I touched her knees, I rubbed her feet as she laid in the hospital bed in her living room. And I told Belle over and over again how much I loved her. I told her over and over again, thank you. 40 plus books in 40 plus years and so many lives and minds and souls touched by her words, even those who may have disagreed, even those who may have angered Belle or she them. Bell with many, many energies, many, many ways of being, and hers was the life of the ages. I will miss her voice, her smile, the way she always kept me on my toes, the way she always said both my names, Kevin Powell. I cry as I say this hard because this is hard, but Bell did her work. She did what she came to do. And as Nikki Giovanni recently said about life, we go on. Sleep well, Bell. Sleep well. Bell, you have earned it. So many know the work of Bell Hooks. If I had to describe her work in terms of a central theme, it would be to speak truth against what she called imperialist white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. For Bell, these sites of hegemony or domination are interconnected. In an interview that I conducted with Bell at the New York Times, she said, quote, we can't begin to understand the nature of domination if we don't understand how these systems connect with one another. Significantly, this phrase has always moved me because it doesn't value one system over another, end quote. This insight speaks to Bell's deep understanding of the multiple layers of pain, suffering, and trauma that human beings experience, how they are subjected to forms of terror that must be resisted. Bell Hooks believed in talking back the expression is indicative of having a self-empowered perspective on the world. Talking back for Bell functions as a site of agency. In fact, she links the process of finding and honing one's voice to processes of black women's liberation. She calls it, quote, the liberated voice, end quote. It is this liberated voice and consciousness that transgresses. This is why for Bell, education is a site that must involve the practice of freedom the freedom to resist, the freedom to stand against injustice, and the freedom to explore the recesses of one's soul, and the freedom to love. Within the Greek philosophical tradition, bell hooks is a parhesiastes, one who speaks with parhesia or courageous or fearless speech. Bell spoke against what Cornell West would call a spiritual blackout. In this way, Bell's message is consistent with the voices of Paulo Freire, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, the Buddha, Jesus, Audre Lorde, and Thich Nhat Hanh. Bell was a word warrior who believed in the power of love, yet there is nothing sentimental about it. Bell writes, to know love, we have to tell the truth to ourselves and to others. That is what I would call a form of unsuturing, which I link with what it means to be vulnerable, which means to be wounded. Bell Hooks wasn't just a brilliant and preeminent philosopher and cultural theorist. For those who got to know her, she was also Gloria Watkins, the black woman filled with wit, deep honesty, and who showed me, in this case, genuine love. Thank you. This is Parker Palmer. When Bell Hooks died this week at age 69, the world lost a courageous public voice of love, truth, and justice. And I lost a friend whom I knew largely through her books, but with whom I was privileged to spend a bit of private and public time. I am Bell's imperfect student, but her life and work helped orient me to my own. Five years ago, when Bell and I were in public conversation at St. Norbert's, I confessed that whenever she published a new book, I went directly to the index to look for my name. It was simple. If Bell Hooks found my work relevant to hers in any way, I must be doing something right. 
several of her books serve me as a North Star, providing guidance and encouragement to stay the course. These include Teaching Community, A Pedagogy of Hope, and All About Love, New Visions. Among other things, Bell was a fearless critic of the white supremacist patriarchy that holds the U.S. in thrall. I know those words are anathema to more than a few white people, especially men who reject them out of hand. Today, those people are making sure that American school children will not learn the truth about race in the U.S., thus proving conclusively that the white supremacist patriarchy is alive and well. Well, I am optimistic that the heart of democracy is to love justice, and that's what I'll be talking about some tonight. That if we want to change up many of the things that are corrupting our democracy, we have to return to loving justice. As a white male, I want to say that being open to what Bell Hooks wrote on these topics, allowing her words to interrogate you and your view of the world, is one of the most life-giving things a white man or woman can do. When you show up in the world the way Bell Hooks did, you draw fire. Turns out that love, truth, and justice are unpopular topics in some quarters, maybe because they shine a light on things some want to keep so shrouded in darkness. So Belle's vocation required her to be fierce as well as gentle. I've never known anyone who held that paradox together better than she did. But for all of her ferocity, she always resolved everything in the alchemy of love. With a deep bow of gratitude for Bell's spirit and her work, I will let the words of Bell Hooks serve as her epitaph here. Quote, I believe wholeheartedly that the only way out of domination is love, and the only way into really being able to connect with others and to know how to be, is to be participating in every aspect of your life as a sacrament of love, end quote. To which I will simply add, Amen. <laughs>